Well, congratulations on the show tonight. You were fantastic. Thank you. You know, I was thinking, I love the idea of how musically talented you are. And I'm wondering, out of all, with all the characters you've done in your career, like Seven, American Beauty, have you ever thought about what kind of music those characters would listen to? Like, do you know what John Doe would listen to? No, or? I don't, but I'll tell you, there was a very interesting uh, thing that Sam Mendes did with me before we started shooting American Beauty. He gave me this cassette tape, back in the days of cassette tapes, <laughs> of the music he wanted me to listen to that he thought Lester would listen to. Interesting. What was on there? Oh, it was like all kinds of really... Actually, there's some Bobby Darin on it. And then he ended up using Bobby Darin in the soundtrack. But it was really interesting. No director had ever done that. Like, here's the music your character <laughs> might play in the car, yeah. you know? And so I remember driving around for a while before we started shooting, listening to that music and sort of being inspired by it. Um, yeah, I, I look, I, music has always been such a big part of my life. I, I had such a blast out there tonight. Uh, I've had a little sort of throat thing which I've never had before which came up upon me on Friday everyone on our crew has been sick like the last week we've been working 12 hour days and I was rehearsing every night uh, leading up to this weekend and then we came here to Washington and started rehearsing over the weekend and I couldn't hit the high notes and I was like oh god so I decided tonight to like just be honest and tell people hey you know things going on but actually as the night went on my voice warmed up, and, and I think by the end it was all right. No, it sounded great. And I have to ask you, where exactly in Maryland do you shoot the show? What city of Maryland are you in? Uh, we're just outside of Baltimore. That's amazing. So how about uh, where? what episode are you currently filming right now? Any any, num any specific number we, so we know where you guys are at? I don't think of numbers, but I think we recently, about three weeks ago, reached the halfway point of, of the 13 that we do. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I, I think one of the most brilliant things is the Bobby, Bobby Darren film Beyond the Sea. I think you did a brilliant job with that. I want to ask you, what did that film do for you as a person, as an actor, as a, as a director? How did that movie change your life? Oh, I think I learned so much about, you know, just the what it takes to be a director and also what it takes to have lots of co-directors because in that instance, there were several rem remarkable people that worked with me. Choreographer Rob Ashford has now gone on to become a, a brilliant director in his own right uh, and is uh, doing wonderful stuff uh, uh, now uh, in the theater. Uh, you know, incredible people that surrounded me, the, the, the Phil Ramon, the late great Phil Ramon, who did all the soundtrack work with us at Abbey Road. Um, you know, I feel like I had a whole bunch of co-directors, people who really guided me and helped me take on all the, you know, the roles I took on. And I, you know, in the end, I didn't want to take on all those roles. It was just the way it sort of fell to me. It's, it's sometimes easy for people to think, oh, he wanted to be all those things, but I would have preferred just to have acted in it. Um, it was a passion project. But it was. It was a passion project. And it's, it's sort of fun to get up on a night like tonight and be able to do some of those uh, numbers again. Yeah, they're going to wrap me up, but I have to ask you, I think the ending of Seven is one of the greatest endings of all time. And I think what Fincher did brilliantly was not showing us what was in the box. And I always feel like it's interesting that, you know, what's in the box? I love that line. But what, it's interesting how a director cannot show you something that you can still see it. Do you think it's what's not seen in performances and movies that is really the most impactful? Yeah, I'll tell you actually one of the greatest moments in movies that that ever happened in. Go see Rosemary's Baby. Of course. There's this great scene where Ruth Gordon is sitting in uh, an apartment bedroom and she's on the telephone. And there's a great story that the cinematographer who did that movie told me, which was that he set it up and you could see her and the phone was there, she was on the phone. And Polanski came in and looked through the lens and said, move the camera this way, and move the camera that way, move it this way, move it that way, until you could just see that much of Ruth Gordon. And the cinematographer said, I didn't understand it until the first preview when the entire audience tried to look around the door to see her because he was denying the audience what they wanted to see. Right. And therefore, they instinctively tried to see it. And I think it's one of the most interesting things about, uh, about anything, whether it's a performance or a director or a way something is shot, is what you hold back. It's not necessarily what you, what you give. It's what you don't give that makes the audience come halfway. Richard Spacey, it's an always an honor.